of Hollywood. The Jack Benny Program. ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. And I also want to thank you for that enthusiastic reception you, uh, you gave me tonight. You're really in a great mood. I think that was an excellent idea my producer had of giving out martinis before the show. <laughs> you know, before you viewers send me nasty letters, uh, that is not true. But you have no idea how many people believe the things that we say on television. Uh, for instance, on one show, I did a joke where I said that Rochester took out my tonsils. And I got a terrible letter from the American Medical Association. <laughs> and then the next week, something went wrong with uh, the plumbing. And I had Rochester fix a, a leaky faucet. And I got another letter saying, that was a degrading thing to make a doctor do. <laughs> See, you really have to watch yourself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of doing a sketch or one of our plays, you know, I'm going to devote this entire program to answering many requests that have come from people all... Uh. Mr. Benny, I yeah. hate to interrupt you like this, but when you came into the studio, I asked you for your autograph. Yeah, I remember. Yes, yes, certainly. Uh, well, um, you kept my pen. <laughs> oh, I, I did? Oh, for heaven's sakes, it's the most embarrassing thing. I, I hope you don't think I did it deliberately. <laughs> oh, of course not. <laughs> oh, here. There you are. There. Oh, this isn't my pen. There. there. But this isn't my pen either. Well, look, and we can't stay here all day. Here, pick it up. <laughs> well, don't you see it? No. Oh, well, here, take this one. A quill? I've been a star for a long time. You certainly have. You know, I have a feeling Mount Rushmore will wear out before you do. Well, thank you, and I hope so. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you very much. Now, uh, where was I? Oh, yes. I, as I started to tell you, I'm going to devote tonight's entire program to answering requests that have come in from many of my viewers. Now, I can't answer all of them. I just picked some of the, you know, several letters that were important, I think, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, that the people will enjoy, you know, listening to the answers. Oh, Don, would you bring out my letters, please? Just a minute, Jack. What? This pen is mine. <laughs> now, don't let that confuse you. You see, Don did not ask me for my autograph. I just took that pen off his desk. <laughs> now, here, here's this first letter I'd like to read. Dear Mr. Benny, I enjoy your television programs very much, but I'll never forget the ones you did on radio. I could sit back, close my eyes, and by just listening, visualize everything that you did. What I want to know is, how did you create this illusion? Well, that was done, ladies and gentlemen, by a sound effects man. And rather than try to explain how this, they work, you see, I called up my uh, old sound effects man who used to be with me in radio. And he's here tonight, Mr. Ray Erlenborn. Well, Ray, it's nice to have you here with us. Thank you. Now, um, 
Did you bring your equipment oh, here yes. for the sound effects? Yes, it's all set up right here. Oh. You know, this guy used to do the darndest things. Uh, Ray, first, let's, let's give him a sample of, uh, of some of your sound effects. Like, for instance, when we did a Western scene, how you did the horse's hoofs. Well, we used uh, a coconut shell cut in half. Let's see. Also, how you did a do a parade of marching soldiers. Oh, sure. All the things we used to do in radio. Yeah. Forward, hutch! <laughs> Company, halt! <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> what an army, you know? It gives you a feeling of security. <laughs> When we were when we were doing a, a sketch on a farm, when we used to do those, you made the sound of, of milking a cow. Yeah. Now show them how you did that. Yes. Uh, would you hold the pail, please? Yes. Yes, I'll be. Thank you. <laughs> Gee, farming is fun, isn't it? <laughs> so clever. You know, whenever we had sound effects. Uh, a problem, you know, Ray solved it. Ray, do you remember one time we, we did a radio show where I was dancing with a beautiful girl, you know, and as the lights got lower and lower, our faces got closer and closer. Now, how did you reproduce that delicate sound as my cheek touched hers? Well, I, I took a hot water bottle and slapped it with a pound of raw liver. <laughs> spoken. I nearly married the girl. <laughs> now, but Ray really had a sound for everything. He could even reproduce the sound of a man getting his shoes shined. Now, show them how you did that, a man getting his shoes shined. Go ahead. Well, I, I haven't done that in a long time. No, I want to see it. Go ahead. Well, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Wait a minute, I have to catch the toe. <laughs> oh, about that? That's just one. Now, you know, radio, radio was so simple that in television, if I want to have a barroom fight, you see, I have to hire two dozen st stuntmen, you see, and a lot of breakaway furniture and actually have a man thrown through a window. See? But uh, I, in radio, I remember in radio once, I fought John Wayne. You see, oh, we had a terrible fight. And this is the way I did it. He insulted me, and I said to him, oh, yeah, take that. used to be able to beat up John Wayne. On television, I wouldn't tangle with Loretta Young. <laughs> so I'd like to present my singing star, Dennis Day. I'm a rambler, I'm a gambler, I'm a long way from home. And if you don't like me, then leave me alone. I'll eat when when I'm dry and a moonshine don't kill me I'll live till I die I've been the moonshine for many a year I spent all my money on whiskey and beer I'll go to some holler I'll set up my still and I'll make you a gallon for a five dollar bill I'm a rambler I'm a gambler I'm a long way from home and if you don't like me then leave me alone I'll eat when I'm hungry, 
I'll drink when I'm dry. And if moonshine don't kill me, I'll live till I die. I'll go to some holler in this country. Ten gallons of wash, I can go on a spree. No women to follow, the world is all mine. I love none so well as I love the moonshine. I'm a rambler, I'm a gambler, I'm a long way from home. Me, then leave me alone. I'll eat when I'm hungry, I'll drink when I'm dry. And if moonshine don't kill me, I'll live till I die. Oh, moonshine, dear moonshine, oh, how I love thee. You kill me, old father, but now you try me. Oh, bless all moonshiners and bless all moonshine. Your breath smells as sweet as the dew on the vine. I'm a rambler, I'm a gambler, I'm a long way from home. Notice that I didn't talk to Dennis either before or after his song. You see? And the reason I didn't will be explained in this next letter I'm going to read. Dear Mr. Benny, I've enjoyed your shows for many, many years, but there's just one thing. Dennis Day and Don Wilson seem so talented, and yet you never give them a chance to do anything by themselves. So I would appreciate it if you just once you'd get off the stage and give them a chance to work alone. Now, you know, when I first read this letter, I thought it came from maybe Don Wilson's wife or Dennis's mother, you see? But it didn't. It came from my sister. <laughs> so for my sister Florence and millions of other viewers who may feel the same way, I told Don and Dennis to cook up something they could do on their own, and they did. So right now, I would like to introduce Don Wilson and Dennis Day giving their impression of a very famous comedy team. <laughs> Stanley, what is it, Dolly? Why are you stopping the car? I think we have a flat tire. But you don't think you have a flat tire. Get out and look. <laughs> All right, Ollie. I was right, Ollie. We have a flat tire. Get back in the car. Get out and blow it up. Watch me. 
touch me and see how it's done. <laughs> I want to say you did a wonderful, that was a most wonderful imitation of Laurel and Hardy. Who? <laughs> Laurel and Hardy. I thought we were doing Amos and Andy. <laughs> uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, to answer the next request, uh, would you open the curtains, please? Now, the reason for this piano being here is that I've received hundreds of letters from our viewers. People have heard me talk about my giving concerts all over the country. And yet, they say that on my television show, I never play anything seriously. I'm always kidding around, you see. So, therefore, I thought that tonight I would like to play a number and really go all the way through with it. And uh, I have, um, for this, I have an accompanist the piano, Mr. Walter Leland, who has accompanied uh, such great artists as Yasha Heifetz, uh, Misha Elman, and Isaac Stern. Uh, Jack, 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 uh, Mr. Leland called just about an hour ago to say he wouldn't be able to make it. Oh, for heaven's sake, I want to play my violin. Yes, I know, Jack, and I knew you'd be terribly disappointed, so I'll tell you what I did. I took the liberty of calling the Musicians' Union, and they're sending over a piano accompanist. Oh, well, good. Is he here? Yes, yes, he's right in the wings, right oh, here. Oh, 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 well, fine, have him come on. Yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. Lassay, uh, Mr. Lassay, will you come in, please? <laughs> Jack, this is Mr. Benjamin Lassay. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> now, um... I know you were called in pretty late, you know, to do this, got a late call, so I certainly appreciate the fact that you took the trouble to put on a tuxedo. When I got the call, I was already in my tuxedo. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, you were playing somewhere else? No, I was getting married. <laughs> I was on my way down the aisle, but a job is a job. <laughs> I mean, how did you have the nerve to leave your bride? But when you've got my looks, you can afford to be a cad. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, shall we get to work then? <laughs> yeah, don't get right over there. <laughs> Hungarian Rhapsody, yeah? <laughs> I don't know that one. <laughs> well, let's play my theme song, Love and Blue. Okay. I mean, introduction, please.
Now, let's play this right. Wait a minute, I want to rise on my bow first. <laughs> Later, I'm robbing a safe. I love it. Ready? Very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoyed the show. And I'll be seeing you soon. Hi, I'm William Conrad. Join me for Canon tonight at 8 on TV20. tell you, we never had it so good. TV 20 makes it better all night. Raymond Burr is Perry Mason. That's coming up momentarily. This fall, TV 20's got it all.